Welcome to All My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. Let's go into prayer. We're going to be very brief and we are going to discuss the injustices of in biblical days and probably bring it up to current day which we live in, okay, into context. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Let the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. My rock, my Lord, and my Redeemer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy and your grace and your goodness that meets us every day, every night. Morning by morning, your mercies are new. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name, O oh God, is to be praised. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercies that are new every morning. Amen. In the Old Testament, we had uh, two prophets who spoke and proclaimed the message of God for their nations. Oftentimes, we do have present-day prophets who are ministers who will intercede and pray for our nation. Some of them, or some of them are renowned, and some of them are quiet prophets, but they stay in intercessory prayer, or they proclaim according to what God has called them in their assignment. And this particular prophet, Isaiah, he was called both to speak judgment to his nation, why should nations, both northern, Israel, northern community and southern community. Israel represented the northern community. Judah represented the southern community. And it mentions, although they advanced the, the advancement of the Assyrians posed a great threat to the south and you can see the Assyrians their customs were to um, bring atrocities bring oppressions and to keep bondages on Judah but God foretells the destructions of the oppressor Assyria and other evil surrounding nations through the prophet Isaiah so that was his proclamation not only to show that there was going to be a foretelling of the destruction of Judah and um, Israel and although it didn't happen in uh, Isaiah's timing but it still end up happening eventually okay because we we do know the fall of Judah um, the fall of Israel was 586 BC and then we also know that the invasion of Judah was represented and I believe it was in about 735 where the Assyrians began to torment Israel during the reign of Ahaz. Ahaz, okay? And that is um, in passage Isaiah 5, 26 and 30. Now, oftentimes we can look and recall the prophet Isaiah as he's going around his character pro profile he always mentioned about trees and New Living Translation reads trees and prophets share at least one important characteristic both are planted for the future yet seedlings are often overlooked which are little seeds that will grow into trees are often overlooked and prophets who proclaim God's message often ignored or think you, you think they are crazy okay Isaiah is one of the best examples of this New Living Translation of page 1101 in your study Bible it says the people of the, his time could have been rescued by his words so when he was compassionate to share God's word even though no one was listening he still proclaimed the message even when no one's listening instead a shadow they refused to believe him and with the passing of centuries however Isaiah words have cast a shadow on all history so it was the imprint of their history Isaiah was active as a prophet during the reigns of five kings but he did not set out to be a prophet that wasn't what he wanted to do he did not have intentions to become a prophet as myself, I did not have intentions to proclaim God's message or become ordained clergy. I had set out to be a lawyer. 
oftentimes God will allow us to be called in his divine purpose but his divine will and his purposes are greater than our little finite purposes so I took to God be the glory it says by the time King Uzziah died Isaiah may have been established as a scribe in the royal palace in Jerusalem it was a respectable career but God had other plans for his servant Isaiah's account of God's call leaves little doubt about what motivated the prophet for the next half century his vision of God was unforgettable as we can recall when Isaiah was called in Isaiah 6 5 so I said woe is me for I am an undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the King the Lord of hosts of God's armies of heaven's armies so he took a glance at himself and he mentions that he said to he said to God in answering God's call as the voice shook the temple and its foundation and then he said to God it's all over I'm doomed because he heard God's voice for I am sinful man I have filthy lips and I live among people with filthy lips you ever feel a conviction on your life where I'm in a setting where I should not be God's holiness is upon my life his anointing is on my life for me to do good and to work what he's called me to do to bring people into a better place to bring liberty to help bring compassion but they want to do other things they want to speak ill they want to do evil they want to practice atrocities they want to oppress people but woe is me woe is my arena I got to get out of this arena. He came to himself and realized there's something different. God's holiness is different from the world, from what he was accustomed to. And he said, yet I have seen King, the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim, which is the angel that sets before God, flew to me with a burning coal. And he had taken it from the altar with a pair of tongues. He touched my lips with it and said, see, this coal has touched your lips now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven then i heard the lord asking whom shall i send as a messenger to this people whom shall i say to this people who will go for us i said here I am, send me. And he said, yes, go and say to this people. So what that entered, what Isaiah entered was his divine calling, his purposeful calling of proclaiming God's message to the nations. And he was able to enter it because he admitted his wrongdoings. He had... He acknowledged the flaws in his humanity and those whom he lived with. And God put coals and had touched his lips by the angel of the Lord to remove the guilt and to forgive him of his sins. And called him out and asked the question. And he was able to consciously and genuinely discern and to accept his calling and say yes here I am send me and that is what God is asking in a perverse generation which we live is to acknowledge where you are admit your sins confess them as sins don't sugarcoat it and when God has asked you to come forward and to say whom shall I send whom shall I have to help this people or help this nation help the United States and sending forth a message to proclaim healing correction that we may turn from 
our ways and turn to God as a nation. And God is asking, whom will I send? Will you say, send me? And that's what God is saying. Even Isaiah, he went through many afflictions. He said, look it. In Isaiah chapter 6, listen carefully. You're going to go to people and you're going to require them to listen. They're going to listen carefully, but they will not understand. They'll watch you closely, but they will learn nothing. Their hearts will be hardened and their ears plugged. And they'll shut their eyes. That way they will not see with their eyes, nor hear with their ears, nor understand with their hearts and turn to God for healing. And this what brings me to mind of a Facebook post, and I'm bringing it into current um, context, where we see a type of typified Assyrians who like to oppress um, registered voters okay and like we mentioned in the Old Testament Judah represents the South Israel represents the North well we still have some voter suppressions throughout our nation and oftentimes this is a critical analysis of people's narrative we have um, a female who had mentioned on the Facebook about the title of this this um, page is another election another failure by white women and oftentimes some people will take that and, and um, blanket it as a truth and it is not true oftentimes it's a it often affects all of us you know so this is what one person replied I think the issue goes much deeper than race or gender the issue is far more evil and insidious the issue is self-centeredness we have become a culture of what mine is mine I worked hard for it and I'm not sharing it we are building walls to keep the refugees out we vote big business rather than homeless. Those that have health care don't care whether his neighbor does not have it or not, or does have it. Children go hungry on, in this country. We might take canned goods to the state fair to get it in free, but we don't vote for social programs to feed the hungry. We depend on ch our charities to help those in distress, but we don't donate to those charities ourselves. And she mentions, I am much more frightened about self-centeredness than all of the biases. I am a white senior citizen, she identifies herself as, born and raised in the South. I voted pretty much to write down the Democratic ticket which included a black woman running for the house. I fear for this country imploding from its own selfishness and greed. Somehow we lost God in our governmental process. I voted for those who might help restore our humanity. And she mentions it's not a black and white thing and often it's not about party. But she said she stuck to her particular party and whom she thought will be effective. But again, and um, Isaiah, it mentions the ills of humanity. And we do have some of these characteristics as a nation. In Isaiah chapter 5. And it reads about... Judah's guilt and judgment. Okay. What sorrow for you who buy up houses after house and field after field. Just like how people say it's mine. You know, and some people have this um, theme of um, get all the toys before you die. It's not going to your grave, so I got to get it while you can. So they buy house after house, field after field, until everyone is evicted and you live alone in the land. 
And we just had a California who had um, lost their lives and God have mercy upon their their lives and um, 39 people or more had passed away. God's grace and his mercy is comfort be with the families who's lost their lives and the the uh, disparities among the rich versus those that didn't have so much. I would say the poorer class. The, they saw that in reality those that were rich had organized themselves to to go ahead and per, um, pay for private firefighters to save their homes. This is what the rich had done and some also aided others, you know, their neighbors. But those who didn't have that income or that um, the capital to do that, theirs burned to the ground. And it says, woe to that until everyone is alone in the land. And it says, but I have heard the Lord of heaven's army in Isaiah 5. Swear a solemn oath. Many houses will stand deserted. Even beautiful mansions will be empty. Ten acres of vineyard will not produce even six gallons of wine. Ten baskets of seed will yield only one basket of grain. What sorrow for those who get up early in the morning looking for a drink of alcohol and spend long evenings drinking wine to make themselves flaming drunk. They furnish wine and lovely music at their grand parties, lair and harp, tambunes and flute, but they never think about the Lord or notice what he is doing. So when we get caught up in our luxuries, when we get caught up in everything's hunky-dory and we don't wake up and attune ourselves to acknowledge a living being within our own soul, a living being who sets high and we set low, who's waiting to have a relationship with us, who we need to acknowledge he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who has, who is Mother Nature, okay? Who makes life to being and who also subdues the nations okay so my people will go into exile far away because they do not know me those who are great and honored will starve no matter how honored you are God can set those who are on high pedestals and can cause them to fall as we saw in many um, Christian sects as far as Bishop Eddie Long or what have you before he passed away then he was greatly honored but then it says how great how how what do you call it how great that the mighty has fallen people how how you get there is also how you would serve God it's not for your self-service it's not to be self-centeredness it's not about I but how we can better the community and show compassion and not to coerce abuse or manipulate our power or our wills upon others or to ignore the cries of the poor and to turn a, 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 a you know a naked eye and it says and the common people will die of thirst the grave is licking its lips in anticipation Isaiah 5 verse 14 it says the great and the lowly and all the drunken mob will be swallowed up humanity will be destroyed and people brought down even the arrogant will lower their eyes in humiliation because it's like, why did this happen? I am awestruck. You know, they're going to be an awestruck. But the lords of heaven's armies will be exalted by his justice. The holiness of God will be displayed by his righteousness. And that day, lambs, little children will find good pastures. And fat and sheep and young goats will feed among the ruins. So... Just take and consider some of the things that you and I are seeing in these tough and hard days that we have seen week after week, months after months, the shootings, the floods, the tornadoes, the fires, more shootings, more floods, more fires. So I pray that you have a right relationship with God. He says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead, 
you shall be saved. It says, with the, with the heart, man believeth, humankind believeth unto salvation. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So I just want you to continue to bask in God's glory. It says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. And just continue to consider those things and in the midst of all the chaos and confusion that this world can offer, there is still peace. There is still beauty. We just actually enjoyed um, Veterans Day um, a week ago, a couple of days ago. And it remember the hallmarks of which this country was erected, established. Oh, beautiful. Oh, gracious skies. You know, from sea to shine and sea, you know. And so just know that you have some hallmark songs of our nations that we hold on to. Um, there's a lot to be proud to be an American. There's a lot to be proud for your ethnicity, your race, your gender, your, your um, people sect, your descendants, uh, your predecessors, your ancestors. Know that you have rich history as you only know and if your family passed down that oral tradition of knowing your history that is remarkable just know your love and God is smiling upon you and that he loves those whom the world says are outcasts he said I've called you my by name he called you by name and you are mine hallelujah isn't that beautiful and I can read that with you in Isaiah You, I called you and you are mine, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isaiah 43 and 1. Redeemer of Israel says, But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. When you see those names, just put your name there. That's what I was taught when I was growing up. But however, Jacob was given a new name, Israel, because he strived with the Lord and he prevailed. And God called him when he was a child or when he was not a child, I would say youthful and naive when he was adult and gave him a new name, Israel, and tells him, fear not, and tells you and I, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. So therefore, do not fret. Know that you are redeemed. And some people say, I can't be redeemable. I've done too much. God's, just like how God forgave Isaiah the prophet whom he used and said, I am a man of unclean lips. I work among people who are have unclean lips. And God had to remove his guilt and forgive him. And God is the only one that has the power to forgive our human sins, which are many. Okay? And he can cleanse us as a nation and forgive us as a nation. As the Chronicles mentioned, if my people who are all of us we are all created and we were created to give him glory if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves don't want to be arrogant don't want to be prideful will humble themselves seek my face turn from their wicked ways and seek my face then will i heal their land and forgive their sin and heal their land wouldn't you want God to heal your territory, heal your city, heal your state, heal your nation, heal your region, heal, heal the world? But it's going to take you and I to continue to be ambassadors for Christ, to be uh, ministers of reconciliation, reconciling, reconciling people to God, showing that there's peace, that we are peacemakers in this world. Showing peace to one another. 
giving out peace, forgiving one another, loving one another. And sometimes it might trip you up, but know the resiliencies of other uh, other humanities and, and their um, particular race or ethnicities and how they was able to sustain me being a woman of color and share both uh, African American history and also rather distant but it's still a Native American history the atrocities on both sides imagine being shipped here forcefully you know being beaten being tight-knit with with all manner of disease chained even though it didn't happen to me physically but that's in the history books of when we say African Americans we have to go and instead of saying Americans sometimes some people put African Americans that our society in America places us and separate us and put that on paper so I am not naive to that so when you are in societies you have to know your narrative of, of, of what people group and what nationality does it matter in God's sight no it doesn't matter because you belong to God you know you are one race that is the human race but I don't want you to be naive out there either okay so know and be confident in who God has created you to be and to become a well-developed intellectual or identify yourself as creative or whatever you want and become and and show God's good purposes he has established in your heart to do justice and to do good and continue to walk in power and faith and honor the Lord your God amen who is your Redeemer who loves you and has called you by name amen amen God bless you the Lord loves you may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace in Jesus name amen and amen